Welcome to BFM Spotlight, uh, Zainal Aman Shah, the Chief Executive of Invest KL. Now, you. Um, Zainal, you know, you spend all your time overseas, right? You, you talk to MNCs all the time, all over the country, all over the world, essentially. I want to ask you to tell us um, your most encouraging story and, uh, you know, your most, the most encouraging feedback from them and the most distressing feedback that you get from them. Just two little anecdotes, if you can. The most encouraging is that the the are pleasantly surprised. Now, those MNCs that, that knows about Malaysia... Knows those about, that know about Malaysia? Those that, there know, are those that yeah, don't know about Those Malaysia. that don't know. So okay. there's, there's, there's slightly different uh, reaction. Those that know, they will ask the question of, oh, you know, I've been there, I was there for a couple of years, what has changed and, and so on. When we tell them the story of what changes we are making, mm. You do get them the, the reaction of raised eyebrows. Oh, really? We're doing that? Oh, what about this? What about that? What about talent? Oh, you mean I can do that now? So we say, yes, come and talk to us. The government is very, very serious. For those that don't know us, I think they're even more pleasantly surprised because they think, oh, Malaysia or KL is some Islamic country. Uh, the news picks up the bad news. Mm. And the news highlights the bad news. For example... If KL has a little bit of a flood, right? Then we ourselves say, oh, flood, there's a lot of flood, there's this and that. Let's take Singapore. I was talking to, to a taxi driver. I said, Singapore gets flooded, right? He says, no, we don't call it flooding. It's water ponding. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, th there's a lot of perception that's going on. And... Slowly but so surely. So you see, the, the developed countries play the media game more savvy than yes. uh, more savvy than us. I I would think so. I okay. think I think that's that's opportunity again for us. I always look at okay. it as an opportunity. Glass there is, full, right? That's right. There is upside for us to basically tell the story of what's going on. That there's real economic activity. The government is not perfect. We're not saying we are perfect, but we're making the changes. We're making the right moves. It will take time. We will get there. So when we tell these stories, that's the good part. The pleasant reaction. Of course, the, yeah, that, 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 that's the good part. That's yes. the nice sauce, right? What about yes. the bad stuff? Um, you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, Anwar and this and that. I mean, you yes. know, anecdote. Yes. I think that the, the things like that now appears to be entertainment for them. They say, ah, okay, if there was, there was none of this, it wouldn't be entertaining. But how does that affect business? I think in reality, the, the tough part is when we say things like liberalization, it does take time to change. So, uh, and the government has changed. Some of the policies, the policy measures, will take time to change. Some <coughs> will be a little bit more immediate. Um, for example, when we say um, relaxation of foreign equity ownership, the government has made an announcement in many, many sectors where they can do that. Education, for example. So this is a first. It's never been seen before. And this is a result of the the strategic reform initiatives, this is happening. Some will take a little bit longer. For example, if you have to change an engineering act, for example, such that the expat engineers can come in and practice and sign mm. off on the work. Mm. That's being put up at parliament. It will take time. So sometimes the multinationals will say, okay, I want it now, I want it now. We have to, to say, okay, let's be a little bit patient. It's okay. a policy change. Okay, so let's talk about um, discrimination policies, right? We've got a we've got a very entrenched uh, racial, um, institutionalized, in fact, uh, racial discrimination policy in Malaysia, right? And if you talk about liberalization, you talk about change, right? In developed countries around the world, like, like say, in London, you've got a very entrenched system where if you do something against me, if, if, if it's uh, based on discrimination, well, then you get a boot, right? In Malaysia, we are very, very far away from that, arguably, right? Like, for example, you, you're Zainal Aban Shah, Okay, you are, to all intents and purposes, a Malay, a uh, Bumiputra. When will the day come when the government will feel free enough and um, you know, unprejudiced enough to appoint the best man for the job? Not just because you're good, but you also must be this and that, A, a B and C. Yes. Well, first of all, uh, Ku, I would say the word racial discrimination per se, it's, it's, to me, it's quite extreme. It's not yeah? a flood, it's a water pond. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it. I, I, I still believe it, it is a bit extreme. It, it, it is there. Uh, yes, we talk about you know, the NEP and so on and so forth. Um, I think certain positions granted that 
uh, if it is government government linked, then there is that preference for for the Bumi Putra. So that that exists, and I I, I can't comment when too much on that. We're asking about the roadmap. You know, what, is it going to be sooner or is it going to be later? I think uh, let's let's move away from the government type jobs, right? Let's look at the opportunities that are. Uh, going to be available for the private sector. Sure, we take it on board. The, the only thing is, um, and the government is talking about liberalising um, equity in its in its structures yes. to the private sector. Yes. But in many sectors that we see um, on a reported basis in the last few months, say for example in property, um, quite the opposite is happening. Government ownership in in private sector companies and property have been increasing, not decreasing. Mm. Mm. So the addressable market is getting smaller, not bigger. Okay, let, let me address your, your earlier point that talks about opportunity, opportunities for locals. I think the, the, the message here is this. As we get more multinationals to come in and invest in Kuala Lumpur, there will certainly be job opportunities. <clears throat> A lot of the CEOs that we talk to, they say, look, my 10% will come from overseas because I need to bring in the knowledge and do the knowledge transfer. Hence, the next senior layer of management will be locals. It will so have to be staffed by locals. That's a, right. they're faster. B, they're cheaper. That's right. right? So that one, they, don't, they do not look at race. So let's separate the government-linked opportunities versus the pure private sector. And, you know, the, the transformation program is predominantly private sector-driven, private sector funding. So the, the decision to put the best candidate there will be dependent on that organization. So the message to our our um, people is let's be ready because the multinationals are very demanding. Right? Are we ready, for example, to 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 work on a survival mode, on a crisis mode, day in, day out, at such a high standard. We Malaysians cannot be pampered anymore. Sometimes we want high paying jobs, then we say, okay, I'm not prepared to do this and that and the other. But whereas you find that in other countries they are in survival mode, do or die, and they will do it. Uh, your your second question on uh, the, the address of certain sectors, certain verticals. Yes. Um, again, here in the transformation program, it does look at expanding the pie, right? Now, if we look, and the pie at, has got to expand. Yes. The challenge for local entities would be not just to look at local opportunities. Our local companies needs to venture out to become regional champions and so on. Okay, that's uh, that's number one. I think there are also opportunities for our local companies, GLCs, non-GLCs, listed, non-listed, to also do a lot of partnerships with multinationals. Uh, so again here, let's, let's study the opportunities. Let's look at the opportunities. Let's make the opportunities happen. Let's work together. Uh, the government again is saying, okay, you, you come forward, tell us you know, what's in your plan. We will then go forward and say, all right, based on your plan, this is what we can offer. Have you thought about this, that and the other? So I think the, the, the transformation program actually makes the pie bigger. But the question is, are our companies ready? Are our people ready? I do believe that there are opportunities. I've come from the private sector. In my previous organization, I personally studied the 12 NKAs line by line. And there were opportunities for a company like Redtone, small company, but we had opportunities. How? Because we went for it. We understood. We went for it. We approached the government uh, body Pemandu then, and, and it happened, you know. So there are opportunities. Zainal Ahmed Shah, Chief Executive, Invest KL. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Spending on BFM Spotlight. Thank you very much. Thank you.